So now we're going to be moving on to our next presentation um, by Mathieu Sonia, uh, who's going to be talking about incident response playbooks um, and basically a new open source uh, resource um, uh, that we can look at. Now, uh, now uh, Mattia is going to be doing some live demonstrations towards the end of this today. So, so we'll be keeping our fingers crossed that the demo gods uh, are kind to us. Um, but Mattia, I'm really, really, really looking forward to your your presentation. And so, so I, I have to I have to say bonjour, ça va, uh, <laughs> um, I, I I know I know uh, like a lot of people don't know this about me, but my 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 ancestry has got a bit of French ancestry and, and, and unfortunately uh, bonjour uh, bonsoir and savars about pretty much all I, can, all I can say in french um but but really uh, great to have you here um uh, representing representing france so uh, lovely to have you here we're certainly looking forward to your presentation and uh, i'm going to hand it over to you so uh, um all over to you welcome everybody <laughs> sorry for the little delay um, this talk is called Incident Response Playbook, a new open source resources. And that's a mouthful to say next time. Uh, please tell me that this is almost a tongue twister, so I'll get a better, an easier title to say. Um, this year presentation is a Venom team. So if you're wondering who that gentleman here is, it's not a portrait of me, it is Venom. Um, as Jason mentioned, my name is Mathieu Sony. I'm currently a senior manager incident response at Syntax. I'm also a core mentor for DEF CON Blue Thing Village. And uh, beside incident response, I also uh, specialize in threat hunting, adversary detection. Um, I'm also part of the NorthSec Security Conference as a VP of training. And uh, I love giving talks, and I had the pleasure to do so in DerbyCon, Blue Thing Village, NorthSec, Sector, and uh, a few B-sides. So as Tanya Jenka would say, this is the part where I'm trying to convince you, the audience, that I'm uh, qualified to give my own talk. Um, you can find me on Twitter at ScoobyMTL, and in the community, I'm better known as Scooby uh, pretty much everywhere. So enough about me. Let's get into uh, the subject of today. So um, first of all, I'm gonna talk about the background and how this whole project came to be. Uh, I'm gonna present the current offering in open source playbooks. Then I'm gonna talk about our, um, our hybrid format uh, and I will present the current playbook that we have open sourced and then how you can actually contribute to this project. Um, these full screen pictures are there only so I can drink a sip of water without you not noti uh, noticing. And uh, a disclaimer, of course, this is my own opinions, uh, not those of my employer. And these are not our actual playbooks. They are kind of rendition. Um, and there's a few things that we have to remove, of course. Um, so the background, about a year ago in, in early June, July, um, Syntax was looking for a, a senior manager incident response, and they wanted someone to own their incident response program. After a few um, interviews, I was hired as a, I was hired in July to 2020. And one of the things that I said many times during those interviews is that if this format is interesting, I would really love to share it with the community. Um, and they agreed to that. So here I am a year later presenting to Sam's uh, Differ Summit, which I believe is one of the best places to actually uh, release that work. Um, one of the first things I start doing when I got uh, hired is ask a question to the SOC analysts, to the management, and to also the higher management as to exactly what they wanted. Um, so when I talked with the SOC analyst, what they wanted was something that, were, that I would call micro plays or work instruction. So really a procedure, a step-by-step -step things that they need to do to actually perform um, the incident response. <clears throat> when I talked to the uh, management of the SOC, they say that they wanted more like a process. So the big steps that they should make sure that their team follows uh, in order to go through the incident response. And finally, when I talked to the higher management, what they really wanted was a crisis management plan. So they, they wanted more a plan. They wanted to know 
uh, who they need to contact outside, which team uh, internally they needed also to engage in case of a major crisis. So three level and three very different type of uh, needs. So I represented this a little bit like this. So you have the incident response plan that is at the top here and is more uh, usually sea level or higher management. Then you have the middle layer uh, for SOC manager or maybe for more senior analyst, which is the, the, the playbooks themselves. Um, and here you'll have something like ransom playbook, active directory compromise, uh, the good old phishing playbook, and uh, of course, account compromise and a few others. Um, so these are the ones that we're going to share today. So this middle layer here. And then for the SOC analyst, um, as I said, they wanted something that they could give to maybe a new hire and they would be ready to go. Um, so here you would have things like how to submit a hash to virus total, hybrid analysis. How can you retrieve a PCAP from different type of WAF or IPS that you may manage? Uh, how to create user in your various security solution. You know, all of those things that are kind of step-by-step step and uh, that might or not happen on every single instant response. And once you know how to do them, you don't actually need to have them every time in your playbooks or in your, uh, you don't need to see them and you'll, you'll see how we addressed that. So let's go over the current offering of open source uh, playbook. I think the one that is the most famous is the IRM from Société Générale, which is a French uh, bank or a French financial institution. It is in PDF. It is extremely Windows centric. Um, it is more like a procedure. So at the, the work instruction level, if we want to continue the, to keep the same uh, wording. Uh, and it didn't have any edits in five years. And fun fact is even if the, Société Générale is a French uh, financial institution. They don't have any French uh, playbooks, but they have Russians playbooks. So what do you make of that? Um, another one that is uh, often referenced is the uh, Scottish government uh, playbooks. Uh, you can find at gov.scot. It is also in PDF, although this one was reviewed in 2020. There is a lot of overlap. Uh, between the different playbook. If you look at the ransomware playbook and the malware playbook, there's a lot of things that are exactly the same. That's also something that uh, we try to avoid when we build our own playbooks. Uh, one thing that I like about these ones is that in the annex, you have a workflow, uh, but it's more like a timeline. It's, it's kind of flow. It's, it's a, more like a continuous line. As opposed to this one from incident response, where you kind of have some, some flow and some direction. Uh, this one is called from the consortium. They have PDF and Visio, so you can modify them. They have a total of nine playbooks, but in my opinion, they are all very similar and they use this type of flow charts. Next one is au.com, a little bit less known, I believe. They're now part of Resolve, not exactly sure what that is. They are images. They are very limited, simple. They are extremely high level, but they are interesting flowcharts. And as you can see, there's some decision, some question that you must ask, yes, no, and then it will direct you to different places. And finally, one that I found, I believe, on the SANS um, website when I was looking, it's from uh, Taxati. Um, in the presentation that was done by a guy named Chris Taylor, it is a mix of PowerPoint Vis uh, and Visio or Draw.io. It is, they are workflows. Um, but what I really, really like about this one is that every box in the workflow has a description with bullet points as to exactly what is supposed to be performed in those box. For me, it was the perfect level of high level and uh, explanation. So I really, really felt in love with that format. There was really one problem is that there was only one. And of course, like most presentation, uh, it was the phishing one. So always, when you, I don't know why, when everybody present their, uh, their playbooks, they're always presenting the phishing playbooks. So I made 100% sure that today I will not be presenting a phishing playbook. That brings me to our own playbooks, which is kind of a, a, an hybrid, I would say. Uh, it is hosted in Git. It is in Markdown, and we use Draw.io for our workflow. 
It is open, it is free, and it's very easy to modify. Um, so if you're familiar with Git Markdown, um, or if you're not, it's, uh, it's a language, it's just text-based, and you can easily edit a file in a simple text editor. Same thing for Draw.io, it's kind of a free online version of Visio. So you can open the file and you can modify them at your art content. After I started my uh, format, I started talking on some different uh, platform and uh, I, I came in contact with the React project, uh, which is part of the ATC project. Uh, what I like about this, this type, this, this um, framework or this repository, this project, well, that's the words I was looking for. It has, it is very modular. So you have module for everything. It's like Lego blocks and you pick the Lego blocks that you want in order to build your playbook. And um, it is open source, uh, but right now it is more of a framework slash placeholder. So all of the little blocks, they look a little bit like the screenshot here. So you have, you have the name, you have an ID, uh, and you have a little description, but you don't really have how you can perform those things. And I believe this is coming in the, in the near future. For now, I, it's sad to say, and I feel a bit bad by saying that, but I think it lacks real content. Um, but I think that once it's more public and people start working with it, uh, the content will come. So definitely a project that you should check out. Uh, we've talked about maybe merging our project um, we didn't do it at this time, but it's still on the table. It might happen. Uh, I believe in early June, so when I was, <clears throat> sorry, just about to uh, send these slides to Sans, I came across uh, Austin Songer, or Songer, I'm not sure exactly how you pronounce his name, uh, brand new also open uh, playbook project, and you have the GitHub link here. His, his goal is to build playbook for every minor technique. Um, I tried that in the past. I think it, there's, again, a lot of overlap if you do that because lots of techniques are investigated pretty much the same. I would tend to go more at the technique level. But anyway, uh, I wish him good luck. I think it's going to help a lot of people to have all of those playbooks. And another thing that I found uh, extremely interesting in this project is that he wants to build exercise scenarios uh, that can be used for training purposes. So what that means is if you build a cool tabletop exercise with your team, you can push it there and then everybody can uh, use that scenario after that to train their own uh, SOC. So that, that's one thing that I think is also very interesting. Lots of people are talking about building tabletop exercise. And as far as I know, not many people are actually uh, sharing those scenarios, even though they're not, most of the time they're pretty generic and I think they could be shared uh, very easily. Now it is demo time. So let's pray the demo God. And here you have the URL for uh, our playbook. And uh, they're not currently public. I'll do that uh, in a few minutes when we're at the end of the, um, the, end of the talk. I'm going to do it uh, Captain Jesus style and YOLO it live and put that uh, live. So let's. Can you confirm that you can see the, the project and it's still sharing? Uh, yeah, I can see it, uh, Mathieu. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, so this is the, the format it looks like. So it's, it's a typical GitLab or GitHub project. Uh, you have a few placeholder. For example, here you have anything that you would want to have for your different customer if you're more of an MSSP type of organization, or maybe you could put information about some uh, business compromise. Everything that starts with IRP is an incident response playbook, uh, and the name of the playbook comes right after. Here in product, <clears throat> sorry, you would have things like uh, all the different product that you may use. And I just threw a bunch here. Uh, right now they're all empty, uh, but you can edit and how you make different things. How would you create an account in all of these um, product could be one of the thing that, that would go in there. How do you retrieve a PCAP like I mentioned just earlier. And finally tools is more something, it's more like open, open source tool or free tools. Um, 
We can quickly go through here, something like Talos Intelligence, URL Void, IP Void, uh, Threat Crowd, Cyber Chef, um, a bunch of um, send, free sandbox, or at least that they have some, some level of free services. Um, now, because I said we're not going to do fish, I'm going to go for account compromise. And if you remember the screenshot I showed uh, for Chris's uh, playbook, you'll find this very familiar. So first of all, it starts with a table of content. And if you click on something, it will bring you to the right place. Uh, but right now, we're not going to do that. One thing that I like here is that preparation and detect are almost the same for all playbooks. So I start them collapse, because most of the time, anyway, when your uh, analyst will jump into the playbook, they'll already be at the analyze phase. Um, they'll be prepared. Hopefully, you've prepared them well. And uh, the detection part should have already happened. But I'll still uh, expand at least the text so you can have a, a look and feel uh, for it. But basically, you start with an alerts or a notification. For me, alerts, they kind of come uh, from your organization and or your security tools that you already have, whereas notification would be something that comes from a third party, like a, your, your user or, um, or someone that says, hey, you, you're all staying some phishing website on, on, on your infrastructure. After that, you need to identify the risk factor, the common ones, and the one that might be org specific. But it's still there, org specific sometime. But this is from Chris' uh, template. So I think that's one of the points I also wanted to make uh, earlier is that playbooks, a lot of people, the reason they give to not share them is that they are extremely org specific. And I really have a problem with that. I would argue that maybe the Work instruction can be very org specific because they, this, they depict uh, the product you have and how you do things within your organization. But most of these steps, they're extremely generic and everybody does that. I mean, everybody looks for the file hash on virus total. This is not intellectual property. Everybody does that. And that's why it's in there. And it's the same thing. Um, even here it says org specific, but reputation damage, financial loss is the same thing that's gonna happen pretty much to everyone that's suffer a breach. Um, and yeah, finally, you, you collect the data, uh, you do the triage, is this a false positive or not? If it's a false positive, of course, you stop here, and otherwise you go to the next phase, which, which is analyze. Down here, you have uh, a more text version of it, and the goal here would be that all of these things are clickable. Um, so how do you manage tickets? How do you do things in your seam? How do you manage the antivirus? Uh, your DNS proxies. And what I would like from the community is actually go there and fill uh, those things and create those links um, to the, so it, it's more complete and, and can help more people. Now, if we go here, um, if you don't like to see the, the graph, uh, you can also collapse everything and you can collapse the whole section as well and you come to contain and eradicate. And this is also, uh, in the markdown, you can decide which ones you open or close as you will. So you could only show the, um, the graph, the, the workflow, if that's enough for your team, or you can expand everything. It's really up to you how you do these things. So for account compromise, typically, or, or when you get to the detect phase, uh, you would start by verifying. So you double check with uh, a senior analyst, for example, uh, that if all the data is right, and this is indeed a true positive, and then you move on. One of the things that you might have noticed on this framework that is slightly different from Chris's format is that every uh, piece of the workflow has this little uh, letter on top. Like here you see AA1, AA2, AA3. This stands for, uh, the first A is for analyze because we're in the analyze phase. And the second one is the name of the playbook, account compromise. And then it's just a sequential number. So when, when you talk with your team uh, or when the incident commander talks to the team, you can say, hey, are we done with AA3? And everybody knows what AA3 actually is. Um, and it's because sometimes some of the faces you need to do more than one time. So you can have something that you do in analyze or in containment that you need to do again in uh, the recovery. 
So that makes sure that we're talking about the exact same box in the workflow. Um, so let's continue here. Uh, okay, you're gonna gather a list of affected uh, credentials, probably the uh, affected computer as well, or asset. Then you will uh, assess the level of privilege that was gained by the attacker. And you'll decide if this is a critical incident. If it's a critical incident, you'll go to your critical incident playbook, and then you'll come back uh, to this playbook. And the way uh, I build this um, framework is that you might run many playbook at the same time. So if you have a ransomware, for example, you'll probably run the ransomware or the ransom playbook, the malware playbook, the account compromise playbook, and the critical playbook at the same time. And if you know that you have lost data, well, that's a fifth a playbook that you might run in parallel. You might run the, uh, the data loss playbook. So that's why these numbers are extremely important because they are the same. Uh, some of the names are pretty much the same. Um, do we have a compromised domain? Yes or no. Uh, do we have a live threat actor? So we might take some action differently if we know the actor is still inside. Uh, as opposed to a more smash and grab type of attack. Do we have any backups? Now we, everything is about ransomware these days. So if you, uh, if you have backups, you want to protect them like very early in the process. So even though this uh, part might be for some people consider more um, remit, uh, right, yeah, remit, uh, contain, or, or something like that, I still think that it's important to do it as early as possible. So you'll see things sometimes um, that are not exactly where, where you might think, but there's a reason for that. Uh, log analysis, uh, is there any password reuse? Uh, what, what exactly, what, what type of access was stolen, MFA? It was that exfiltrated, we talked about that, then you would start the data loss playbook, and then of course you come back to the same thing. Do we have, have we identified everything? yes or no, and if yes, uh, we continue. Otherwise, we do that loop again. I'm gonna speed up a little bit. I think we're getting a bit short on time. Uh, then you'll look for your root cause analysis. Do we need legal help? Do we need technical help? And then you'll contact the proper people that you might have on your retainer. Um, the root cause analysis, send communication to uh, your internal folks, your security people, maybe your customer, if you have any, um, well, you have customers, otherwise you wouldn't have a business, but I mean, um, either corporate or even personal uh, people dependent. So again, here you have all of the steps more in uh, detail like this. I'm gonna stick to the workflow. I think it's gonna be enough uh, for the level of knowledge of the folks that I believe are on this talk. Um, so here we are at the contain and eradicate phase. So we, of course, disable accounts, we reset the password, we power down non-encrypted system. This is a box that was caught, of course, from the ransom playbook, but you might want to have it there just in good measure. Uh, you always better save than sorry, of course. Restrict the privileges if you can, if you know that some of the accounts that are compromised are some, in some very powerful group, maybe you can just remove them from those group, remove any cache credential, uh, contain the endpoint, um, block network traffic. And then again, did we ID everything or did we discover new IOCs? And then you would go back in that group or go to the recover phase. Um, so I, the recovery phase, of course, we're going to now update our defenses, lift containment, and all of those things. We're going to change all the passwords sometimes again, uh, especially in the case of uh, curb TGT password, if we believe that it was compromised. Then we would remove anything that we put in place uh, as countermeasure or other, other ways to get in our environment. For example, if we create a temporary uh, VPN or some jump box or some Citrix that we've exposed to the internet to allow our instant response team to get in, but not the adversary, uh, we would remove all of those things. We would start rebuilding the systems. Uh, of course, from clean media, same thing, restore the, back, the, the data. Hopefully you have protected your, your backups. And then uh, we would do some audit of our internal facing services. 
Finally, we get to the post-incident um, phase. And here it's also pretty straightforward, I believe. Incident review with all of your team, what worked, what didn't work, what could you improve? Uh, you update your policy and procedures if you find that there's a lack in there. You would review again your defensive posture. Um, you would review, you would schedule right now something that you would review your rule that you just created maybe in six months um, and see if the things are still applicable that you've put during your incident response. You would update, upgrade your defenses if you're still running a good old antivirus, you might want to update and upgrade the signature or the engine. If you have an, um, an EDR, you want to make sure that uh, the behavior now, if there was a malware, uh, is taken care of by your EDR vendor. Um, you want to build new detection and maybe in CM, some CM rules, some tickets that is sent to your SOC. And then uh, you would might maybe modify your base image or change your hardening procedures. Uh, was the incident caused by a human? If yes, you might want to look into your user awareness program to include uh, the type of behavior that was done to make sure that it's not performed again by other people. Pretty sure the person that did it won't do it again, but still there's probably a lot of people in your org. So it's important that everyone understands what happened. Of course, we're not here to blame a person. It's just to educate uh, your corporation. Then we calculate the incident cost, and that's the end of the incident response. So I hope it was clear uh, and that it was uh, good enough, really good enough, but I mean that, that you enjoyed the format and that you will use it. Uh, here I have um, how to create a new playbook. So for example, if you want to create the DDoS playbook, uh, you would call it IRP-DDoS. Uh, you would create a file that would call readme.md inside your new folder, and you paste the content from the template, which is IRP-template.md. Then you would do a find and replace dash name dash with the name of your playbook, for example, DDoS, in all of the documents. And then you can start editing the documents and changing uh, the things. For, for the workflows, um, you go inside, uh, inside your folder and you create a workflows directory, and then you open the workflow template in draw.io. You save locally. Um, this, you, can, you can do it on, online, but be careful because as you edit, this is a kind of a pro tip. And if you have a trackpad like I do, and you swipe like this, uh, you will lose your thing. It will, it will do a back and you'll lose everything. So that's why I say save often or use the uh, local application of Draw.io. That will save you a lot of nightmare. Trust me, it happened to me and it's not fun to redo all of the tabs and all of the little box and the little lines when you're almost done. Uh, once you have all your phases done, you use file export as PNG in Draw.io and uh, you save all of these tabs and you put them in that workflow directory. Um, and there you go, you're, you're fine. You just look, make sure that the names are the same as in the markdown. Uh, subfolder, I talked about them already during the demo. I just put it there in case someone is looking at this uh, in the future and has not has the chance to hear my awesome French Canadian accent. Um, how you can contribute? Well, it's quite easy. It's on GitLab, as I mentioned. So you can clone and fork the repo. You can add modify content as your art pleases. Uh, you can use the template, of course, and you can modify the templates. If uh, you feel that there is a section that is missing, I mean, by all means, update the templates as well. You can submit a pull request. For those who are really into uh, contributing, you could help build some pipeline for CI CD and auto merge and stuff like that. If anyone knows how to automate draw IO from a markdown to a graph, that would be awesome. That would save so much time. Um, and for some people that uh, help a lot, they could even become maintainer. Now, this is a slide I really like um, because, in my opinion, it represents um, how we, the defender, can stand up to the red team and adversary if we unite. Um, 
we are, we are bigger, we far outnumber them. And yet, in most cases, I feel that we're always trying to catching up with them. Uh, I feel like, especially the red team, they share more, they contribute more, and um, there's always more things published about red teaming than blue teaming. And that's one of the reasons why I really wanted to open source this project and give back to the community that that given me so much. Um, I think that everyone can share these things. I don't think it's true that it's intellectual property. I mean, as I said before, I think most of these things everybody does or should do. And I'm sure uh, there's a lot of things that are missing that you can contribute. If your organization doesn't allow you to be publicly like in their name, maybe you could ask, ask them if you can publish under a, an alias, a, a name that is not related either to you, a new persona that it's not linked to your company. But anyway, I think there's a lot of way you can contribute back to these projects. Um, I wish that this project becomes the equivalent of Sigma for detection rule or atomic red team for, um, for building uh, attacks. But we'll see what happens in the future. Uh, this is the end of the talk. So thank you very much for all of you who attended. I need to say hi, mom. Uh, and uh, again, my name is Mr. Sony. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at ScoobyMTL. I want also to thank Sans for allowing me to talk here today. It was a great experience. It was a great summit. And I couldn't think of a better place to actually open source uh, this project. So thank you very much. Oh, sorry. One, one last thing. I need to also uh, thank my employer, Syntax, because I don't think there's a lot of employer that would have open source uh, playbooks like this that would allow this. I've worked at many places before, and uh, most of them wouldn't have allowed us to, to do something like this. So thank you. Now Merci I'm gone. Matthew. <laughs> Très magnifique. That's, that's all I can say. But you no, know, really exceptionally wonderful presentation. You know, I was just looking through um, your your hallway as you were talking and like all the wonderful things coming through and like how everybody was really impressed with the work that you've done. I think you've done you've done a phenomenal piece of research, you know, um, how you've put the playbooks together and things along those lines. So this is this is absolutely um, fantastic, fantastic research. There were a few questions that came through on the Zoom channel that I'd just like to share with you. Um, oh. One of them came from uh, Wolfgang Liu, who asked if these playbooks could be ported into a source solution, something like Resilient. Um, curious to see your, your views on that. Well, the, the steps can, but it's not it's right now they're more um it's more a process than a procedure and i believe in in a story you'd be more at the procedure level and yeah. those uh, we didn't share yet same thing for the incident response plan uh this this i think the incident response plan is more uh dear and, and very close to an organization it shares a little bit less than than a process right yeah. um but yeah for the for the other question for the SOAR, um i mean if, if, if some people can help build the, um, the procedure part or the work instruction part, yes, it could probably be ported. We could probably have something in YAML, but at the time that we're like right now, I would say that there is no. Yeah, I was, you know, one thing that, that, that I was really impressed with as well, when you were talking about, you know, how we stronger together. And I think, you know, I, I sort of said, when I started off today's um, session, one of the things with the DFIR community in general around the world is we really, really do help each other out. You know, we really have a mission and a, you know, a, a purpose, a cause that we really believe in. So, you know, your, your call to the community, you know, to get involved is quite great because there's actually a few people that, that jumped into your hallway straight away saying, Hey, um, you know, we've got, uh, I just want to check, uh, um, uh, Milan Cermak was basically saying, hey, well, what about this for doing uh, markdown and flowcharts? So there's like lots of good ideas coming through um, on your hallway. So I'm sure you're going to look at them and say, well, wow, okay, that was, that was pretty cool. Um, so so um, one of the things, uh, another question came through on the channel was from uh, uh, Michael Hesse, basically saying, um, you know, in terms of the gaps with current playbooks, are there specific things you would like the community to help build with? Um, you know, and I, I know you had that call for the community to get yes. involved. So oh, yeah. I think everybody well, I think is like raring to go. Yeah, so I think I said it in the, in the presentation, but uh, maybe I speak too fast. 
Uh, but if people could help with the product part and the, the more the procedure part and, and start building that for tools that they use, um, I think then most people could share, right? Um, how, how you do things in, in different vendors. Uh, you know, if you have access to Microsoft ATP or, or CrowdStrike or Carbon Black or Silence or all of those things, you know, you, we cannot uh, have them all, of course, uh, in, our, in our testing. So we cannot build them for all the product that we don't own. So if the people can start feeding in, then we could also feed more um, of what we have. Because one of the things is that we don't necessarily want to tell everyone exactly which product we are using. But again, as I said myself, we can contribute more anonymously at some point as well. But in this presentation, uh, those are things that were intentionally left out. Yeah, no, and, and, and understandably, I mean, what, what was really nice is just looking at this, the sort of conceptual framework that you built, um, which really just, uh, I, look, I'm, 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 a, I'm an old fashioned scientist in the sense that I like to see sort of processes, you know, my, my, my brain works well with processes. Um, so, so this was really, really brilliant. And, and also a, a very useful tip that you gave out to the community when using draw.io about the, uh, <laughs> the swiping on the trackpad as, as a draw.io user i am you know, i've also had that um, yeah. moment before uh when i've been working on process diagrams <laughs> I uh, never, again, never again never again for major uh, work i'm gonna use the web interface so yeah yeah no, no, I, I, yeah, I, I i i i i regret that i ever did that <laughs> but a good advice um yeah i, I bet, but uh, but here the 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 your presentation is really brilliant like i said you know my my, my very limited french you know trade money you know it's really um you know really excellent uh you know the contributions you made to the community is absolutely amazing and, and this is what i love to see with everybody that's been presenting at the summit um this year and in fact even in our previous summits uh just the level of commitment to our community trying to make the world a better and a safer place and you know from my side i just want to say an absolute absolute sincere thank you for the contribution you've made to to our digital forensics body of knowledge and and the work that you've done and i think everybody is super excited to start contributing i can guarantee you um i'm going to be sitting down with my team after this presentation like probably next week sometime and say okay we've we've got some work to do to come and contribute to 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 the work that you've you've initiated but you so so really well done thank you very very much Thank you very much. It's very nice, kind words, uh, Jason.